Good morning. I am Dr. Arun Kunchreya Joseph. I'm a PG resident at Pushpagiri Institute of Medical Sciences and Research Center, Tiruvalla, Kerala. And today for my oral presentation, uh, I'll be talking about cross-sectional imaging of spectrum of thymic neoplasms, a pictorial essay. So the thymus, as the Greeks believed to be the location uh, of our soul, hence the name, is actually a lymphatic organ crucial in the development and maturation of immune system during childhood. It involutes with advancing age. However, radiological identification of neoplasms of the thymus is significant for effective diagnosis, staging, and to decide on further course of management of the disease. A novel classification scheme by the World Health Organization divided the thymic neoplasms into types A, AB, B1, B2, B3, and C based on the histopathological correlation of these Types A, AB, and B1 were the low-risk category, and B2, B3, and C belonged to the high-risk category. The aim of my study was to discuss the spectrum of thymic neoplasms with radiologic pathological correlation, and to illustrate a wide range of neoplastic conditions affecting the thymus with the help of a pictorial essay. And the methods used included reviewing the CT images of a number of patients in the recent past who were diagnosed with thymic neoplasms based on imaging findings. The imaging diagnosis was then compared with the pathological reports and detailed pictorial essay of the imaging manifestations of spectrum of thymic neoplasms illustrated. So coming to the discussion, I'll be uh, discussing a few of the cases that came out from the a number of cases that came to my department uh, and the interesting ones to discuss the spectrum of thymic neoplasms. My first case was actually a 72-year-old female who presented to the pulmonary OPD with three episodes of hemoptysis and was advised a CT chest. So imaging showed a plain image, axial section, showed a well-defined soft tissue density lesion involving the anterior mediastinum with no evidence of loss of fat planes with the adjacent vasculature. There was no evidence of any significant mediastinal lymph nodes. Post-contrast image revealed uh, enhancement with the centripetal filling uh, and there was no evidence of any bony erosions. So this turned out to be a type A thymoma. My next case was actually a 57-year-old female who presented with cuff for the past three weeks. Chest X-ray revealed a left hilar mass. This is the plain coronal reformatted image showing a lobulated, uh, well-defined lesion with a tiny speck of calcification involving the anterior mediastinum more towards the left side with heterogeneous post-contrast enhancement. However, it is imperative that we note there is no evidence of any vascular invasion or infiltration and there was no evidence of any bony erosions. Again, this turned out to be a type A thymoma. My third case was also a type A thymoma. It was a 69-year-old male with carcinoma rectum and the anterior mediastinal lesion was identified incidentally. This was a solid cystic lesion with predominant solid component. There was no evidence of any calcifications. This was compressing the left brachiocephalic vein and also to some extent the superior vena cava. However, there was no evidence of any vascular invasion. Even though it was abutting the mandibrim sterni, there was no evidence of any erosion or lysis of the bone as such. There was no evidence of any mets. And again, type A thymoma. Case four was actually an 80-year-old lady who presented with breathlessness and cough for one week duration. And the CT image revealed uh, an irregularly marginated, uh, heterogeneously enhancing solid cystic lesion with predominant solid component showing heterogeneous post-contrast enhancement with erosion of adjacent bones especially the rib and the left half of mandibrim sterni and also vascular infiltration. Bilateral pleural effusion was also noted. The coronal as well as the sagittal images revealed chunky calcifications within the lesion and vascular infiltration as such. This turned out to be a type B3 thymoma. My fifth case was a 44-year-old lady who is a known case of myasthenia gravis. And as you all know, myasthenia gravis has great correlation with the thymoma. And a uh, plain CT revealed a well-defined, mildly lobulated soft tissue density lesion involving the anterior mediastinum. It was small in size, moves towards the left side, and near homogeneous enhancement was noted in the post-contrast images with no evidence of infiltration of the adjacent vasculature, no evidence of bony erosions. And this turned out to be a small thymoma. My sixth case was a 66-year-old gentleman with history of weight loss and chest discomfort for the past three months. And his uh, image revealed an irregularly marginated soft tissue density lesion involving the anterior mediastinum with 
uh, extension into the lung parenchyma as well on the left side, the tiny specks of calcification and post-contrast images revealing heterogeneous post-contrast enhancement, infiltration of the adjacent uh, vessels, uh, the arteries and the veins, uh, pleural effusion on the left side with pleural thickening and enhancement, and mild erosion of the bones as, as well. Uh, again, the coronal as well as the sagittal reformatted images are showing uh, the heterogeneous enhancement, uh, the infiltration of the vessels, as well as the pleural effusion. This turned out to be a small cell carcinoma of the thymus, which is type C, the other end of the spectrum of thymic neoplasms. My seventh case was an interesting one. It was a 72-year-old male who is a known case of COPD, presenting with complaints of cough and breathing difficulty. He also had a history of loss of weight and appetite. And his images revealed a uh, fairly well-defined, mildly lobulated, heterogeneously enhancing lesion involving the anterior mediastinum, abutting the iota, and we gave the possibility of a thymic neoplasm. However, a differential of a necrotic lymph nodal mass conglomerate uh, was also given. And surprisingly, the HPR came out to be tuberculosis. My eighth case was a 67-year-old gentleman who presented with heaviness of chest and multiple swellings in the axilla. CT revealed uh, near homogeneously enhancing uh, lesions involving the mediastinum with mediastinal lymph nodes as well, which was seen to compress the SVC as well as the brachiocephalic vein with no evidence of infiltration of the same. There was no evidence of any calcification within the lesion, no evidence of any necrosis, and no erosions of the bones uh, at all. And this turned out to be a diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. So uh, from the uh, images that I've studied or the cases that I've shown, uh, it is very clear that the findings more common in high-risk thymomas and thymic carcinomas include a lobulated contour, mediastinal fat invasion, and great vessel invasion in most cases, except for maybe a one case where a tiny speck of calcification was seen in a type A thymoma. Type A thymomas are more, more well-defined, well-encapsulated, with no evidence of any calcifications, no evidence of vessel infiltration or bony erosions. B uh, type thymomas showed more uh, calcifications. And uh, so overall, I think we were able to identify the types of thymomas from the radiological imaging itself, and they were quite correlated with the histopathological report as such. We also consider the close differentials of lymphoma as well as tuberculosis while this, uh, reporting a thymic neoplasm. So I, uh, the study proved that imaging studies are an imperative part in accurately diagnosing the various thymic neoplasms and that imaging studies correlate with the histopathological report. I thank CTBUS from the bottom of, my, bottom of my heart for giving me this opportunity to present my paper. Thank you.